Today I wanted to share some thoughts on Citrobacter. Now this is a little bacterial overgrowth that I frequently find when I test the large bowel of my patients. It is a member of the Proteobacteria phylum, the Enterobacteriaceae family, and it's associated with an imbalance in the gut. So one of the main problems with Citrobacter is that when it's overgrown, it can set off or trigger your immune system, right? And that's because it's a member of the Proteobacteria phylum, as we mentioned, and all members of the Proteobacteria phylum are made up with a substance called endotoxin in their cell walls. So endotoxin is also called lipopolysaccharide or LPS, and the research gets pretty deep and pretty complex when you dive into it. But the headline here is that an overabundance of LPS-rich bacteria in the gut can really set off your immune system and causes inflammation. When we do test and Citrobacter comes back elevated, the big question is, how did I catch this infection? And uh, you know, Citrobacter isn't so much an infection, it's more an overgrowth of a bacteria that's normal and healthy in small amounts in your gut. So a better question would be, how did your gut and your microbiome become so dysregulated to allow this bacteria to overgrow? when normally a healthy ecosystem would keep it in check and would keep it from becoming a problem. How do we test for Citrobacter? You know, if you go to your doctor and you run a standard stool test, it won't detect Citrobacter. They're not looking for it. It's not that high up there in terms of kind of like pathogens. It's more of this overgrowth. Um, people frequently use uh, CDSAs, or Complete Digestive Stool Analysis Testing. There's also the GI map. You know, here in Australia, we use the Complete Microbiome Mapping Test. And then there's also these kind of whole gut microbiome tests. So in Australia, I use Microba, and I love Microba. Overseas, I would use something like Thrive. You know, and there's a few other DNA-based stool tests that will test for Citrobacter. So what do we do when we find a Citrobacter overgrowth? Now, most naturopaths and herbalists will try and treat it uh, directly with herbal antimicrobials. Um, and for me, I mean, I'm definitely going to use herbs, but I find that that's kind of missing the root cause of why the Citrobacter was kind of allowed to overgrow in the first place. And it's a little bit simplistic, but I always just picture this seesaw. And, you know, with Citrobacter overgrowth, we can see this imbalance in the microbiome. And so I'm always using therapies that's just going to help balance out the microbiome, feeding up those beneficial bacteria, lactobacilli, bifidobacterium, and then all of these bacteria that produce butyrate that no one's ever heard of. And as we balance that out, Citrobacter comes down. And so common interventions, prebiotics, partially hydrolyzed guar gum, galactooligosaccharides, fructooligosaccharides, probiotics as well, lactobacilli reuteri is a really big one here, and then very targeted herbal medicines, you know, frequently rich in polyphenols. So that's an overview on Citrobacter overgrowth. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, then hit the like button or leave a comment below. And if you live in Australia and you are suffering from digestive health symptoms, maybe you're concerned or you know that you have a Citrobacter overgrowth, then consider getting in touch with me here at Byron Herbalist. I'd love to hear from you. All right, we'll see you in the next video.